So in this lesson, we're going to be using a caliper and taking outside and inside measurements with them and kind of give you an idea of how they're different, how the outside and the inside measurement techniques are different. So in the top left here, we have a uh, caliper being used for an outside measurement using the quote unquote outside jaws. And then on the top right here, we have the caliper being used for an inside measurement using its quote unquote inside jaws. So most commonly calipers are used for outside measurements. And then second, most commonly they're used for inside measurements. So calipers are most commonly used for measuring outside features with their main jaws. So this would be widths, lengths, thicknesses, and outside diameters. So on the left here, um, if I wanted to make design a coin sorter, I would want to use the outside jaws to measure the outside diameter of various sizes of coins. If I wanted to uh, make an attachment for my vacuum cleaner, a custom attachment, I'd want to know the outside diameter of the tube that I was making an attachment for so that they would fit together properly. And if I was designing an enclosure to mount this LCD display in, I'd want to know the length and the width of the display itself. So one thing to keep in mind, one thing to know for outside measurements is that when you're taking a measurement, you're always looking for the smallest value. Um, so at the top left here, um, we have a kind of a, a draft a mock-up of a caliper with the outside jaws and it's measuring a square object. And you always, as you're closing the jaws of the caliper, I'm going to demonstrate this, you might have contact with both jaws and think it's a good measurement, but if it's not fully closed, if the jaws aren't fully closed onto the object and they're not sitting squarely, you might actually have a bad measurement. So in this case here, you know, you think you might have a good measurement, but in reality, you can see that this measurement would be an oversized measurement. So if the cube was 0.5 inches and you think you're taking a good measurement, you might actually be measuring um, oversize. Whereas if you seat the jaws properly at the bottom here, then you're more certain that the measurement you're taking is correct. So just to remember, for outside measurements, you're always looking for the smallest value. Now, for outside measurements, um, there are three things to keep in mind, and this actually applies for all types of measurements. And we talked about this previously in a previous lesson, but first, you have to make sure that the caliper, the jaws that you're measuring with, are clean. It's not just the caliper, but also the part that you're measuring, so that there's no dust, uh, debris, uh, grease, things like that on it. You, you want to make sure you, you have a clean surface. Second, when you are taking a measurement, um, you generally want to make sure that the jaws, they seat properly. So I take a measurement. It looks like they're seated properly, but I can actually tilt it and get even closer. So you want a good seating of the jaws. You don't want this. So when you're taking an outside measurement, you want to check tilt this way and tilt this way and make sure in both directions you have a firm grip um, and, and good seating of the jaws on the part. And then finally, you want to make sure that jaw pressure is light. So, you know, I can come in here, grab the part, have a good measurement, but then I can, if I, if I give too much pressure, I can actually flex either the part or the caliper itself. And that, that would give me a bad measurement, right? So you just want to come in and gently um, squeeze the jaws together. You don't want to overpressure. Okay. 
All right, so let's take three different measurements, um, outside measurements. So here we have coin. Want to know the outside uh, diameter? So I'm just gonna bring it between the outside jaws and come in and make sure it's straight. You know, it's not bent or it's not um, crooked. You want to make sure the coin is sitting straight. And there, 0 0.9515, 0 0.9515. Take three measurements always. Um, 0.951, so that's that's good. And here we can take another measurement of another coin. 0 0.8335. 0 0.8335. 0 0.8335. And then just one thing I forgot to mention is, as I mentioned in previous lessons, um, you always start with zeroing the caliper. So you want to make sure that zero is zero. So you come together, zero. Okay, so we can trust these measurements because our caliper does read zero at zero. Okay, next, uh, let's say I wanted to make an attachment for my vacuum cleaner. And I wanted to kind of make some 3d printed part some some adapter that changes the, the shape of the nozzle so for an outside measurement excuse me come in here and we just take an outside measurement so one point two five zero five okay now notice that i want i want to make sure that i'm not wobbling like this i want to make sure that i have a firm good seat on the part okay next let's say i want to um, make an enclosure for this lcd display so you know this is going to output numbers um, and let's say I just want to make uh, a panel that this this is going to stick through and and fit into and stick through. So I would want to use the outside jaws to take this measurement and this measurement. Take the length 2.80. Just take another measurement just in case. 2.7985, it's close enough. And then we'll take a third measurement. Two point seven nine seven five. Okay. And then we'll take the width measurement. Point nine four five again. Point nine four six. Again, 0.945. And again, just make sure it's seated, right? So if if I'm not fully seated, I'm not getting the right measurement. And this way too, if I'm not fully seated, I'm not getting the right measurement. So just make sure it's fully seated. Now, for inside measurements, this is when you're measuring the distance or separation between features and also inside diameters. So if I was going to design a part that fits into this pipe fitting, I'd need to measure the inside diameter of the fittings. If I wanted to mount my LCD display um, into my enclosure using these mounting holes, I'd need to know the mounting hole diameters. So I would do that with an inside measurement. And if I wanted to make a mating hinge for this part, I'd need to measure several things, um, but one of them would need to be the distance between these two tabs. So with inside measurements, um, when you're taking a measurement, you're looking for the largest value. So here we have a mock-up of a caliper, 
and you just want to make sure that the, again the jaws are fully seated on the inside uh, diameter or the inside separation of the feature that you're measuring. Um, if you're not fully seated, you might be taking a smaller measurement than what is the actual measurement. So this up here shows that this is exaggerated, but you think you're fully seated and you're measuring a 0.49 inches. But if you actually um, tilt that, you'll see that you the, the measurement you took is not actually the full inside separation. So at the bottom here, you can see that once you do uh, fully seat the jaws on the inside surfaces of the part, you'll get the correct uh, measurement. And that's going to be your largest value. So the largest value that you can get is going to be your correct measurement. So same thing for inside measurements as we had outside measurements. You want to make sure that the caliper and the part surfaces are clean. You want to make sure that the caliper jaw seats properly. And you want to make sure that you don't apply too much pressure on the jaws to avoid uh, distorting the part or flexing the caliper itself. So if I wanted to make some sort of part that fits into this PVC pipe elbow, um, I'd want to measure this inside diameter, right? So I would use the inside jaws and I would come in here and expand the inside jaws and make sure I'm fully seated. Okay, that's good. So 1.0515. And you can see that if I tilt, my measurement goes down. I'm not fully seated. Once I do get in there and I'm fully seated, my me measurement goes back up and it's the largest value. And also notice here that we have We have these, um, here we go. We have this relief section on the jaws. Here and here. You don't want to be measuring with that. You want to be measuring with this thin section, okay? So. Okay, good. Now, if I wanted to um, make an enclosure for this LCD display, and you know we already measured the the dimensions of the display, but yeah, let's say we wanted to use these four holes to mount the display to the wall of the enclosure, we'd want to know what um, hole size these are, so that we can use the proper screw. So. We'd use the inside jaws of the caliper for an inside measurement. And we come in here, it's tight. And there we go. Now you gotta be careful with this, just make sure you're getting a realistic measurement. But we're getting about 0.116. Try another hole. 0 0.117, 0 0.117. Okay, so, so that's good. And now, let's say I wanted to make a mating hinge for this GoPro. So I would want to, um, I need to take several, several measurements, but for the specific Inside measurement, I want to know what the separation between these two tabs are. So I would come in here and take the measurement. 0 0.140. 0 0.138, 139. So there you have it, an introduction to outside versus inside measurements using the caliper.